So I've been playing a lot of Triangle Strategy since it released. You can actually watch my playthrough live over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash roslingaming. And in the close to 60 hours that I put into the game so far, there are a number of things I've learned that can help make your playthrough a little smoother. So here are my top tips for Triangle Strategy. For the most part, character recruitment in Triangle Strategy is automatic based on the main character Saranoa's convictions. On a first playthrough, you can't see what his current convictions are, as this is hidden from the player until New Game Plus, but you should get most, if not all, recruitable characters. There are a few exceptions though. Very early on, you will have the choice to go to either Ace Frost or Hyzant, and in the grand scheme of things, this choice really doesn't matter for the story. But it does determine which of two characters you are able to recruit. Choosing to go to Ace Frost will give you a hard-hitting archer, whereas choosing to go to Hyzant will let you recruit a mage that specializes in ice magic. I personally recommend going to Hyzant for the mage Corrington. For starters, he gains the incredibly useful ability to put up a wall of ice that can hold choke points and prevent enemies from getting close to you. He also applies copious amounts of frost to the ground, which can then be melted with fire magic to create puddles. Additionally, he can also put out fires with his fire magic, and once he learns the ability to do so, he can put up a barrier on any unit that prevents all damage to that unit for one turn. In general, he opens up more options for you in battle than the alternative, making him an invaluable asset to your army. There is one more place in the game in which a decision you make results in you getting one of four possible characters. I'm going to be quite vague here to avoid spoilers, but you will be given a choice to either go back to your domain, return to a certain city, or go to a certain village. Depending on where you choose to go here, and in the case of the village, your previous choices in the game, you can recruit one of four characters. And for this choice, I recommend choosing either to go back to your domain, or to that certain city. Choosing to return to your domain will award you with a dancer unit that has incredible mobility and supporting capabilities, whereas traveling to that certain city will award you with the game's second true healer. Both are fantastic units, and you really can't go wrong with either. So I just got through mentioning two story choices that can affect which characters you can recruit in Triangle Strategy, but there are many, many more decisions you will be faced with, often morally gray and very difficult. When these come up, you are tasked with hearing out your party members and are given the opportunity to try and convince them to make the choice that you want. In order to give yourself the best chance of convincing your party members, I highly recommend that you talk to everyone and fully explore everywhere when given the opportunity to do so during exploration events. Making sure that you do this will reward you with information that can unlock more dialogue choices when trying to convince your party members to make a decision. Now, while doing this will unlock those dialogue choices that would otherwise be blocked off to the player, it's important to note that the unlocked dialogue options aren't necessarily always the best option for you to choose. But by talking to everyone and getting all of the information you can, you do give yourself the best shot at influencing the path you take through the game. Okay, so it's pretty clear that decisions you make in Triangle Strategy are quite important as they influence how the story unfolds as well as what characters you can recruit. That all being said, I wouldn't stress too much about them though, especially if you plan to do New Game Plus to see everything the game has to offer. This is because on New Game Plus, all of the hidden modifiers for conviction, requirements to unlock characters, and more are made fully available to the player. Additionally, all recruited characters and obtained information is carried over to New Game Plus, making it easier to see anything you missed on a first playthrough. As you progress through Triangle Strategy, you will want to be improving your units as much as possible. One way to do this is with medals, which allow you to promote a unit to either a veteran or an elite. These medals are, at least in my testing, finite per playthrough though. However, a means of unit progression you can definitely farm is weapon enhancements. Weapon enhancements use resources such as timber, iron, stone, and fiber to increase weapon potency, improve stats, and grant new abilities among other things. And the best way to go about farming for materials is through mock battles, which can be accessed at any time that you have access to your encampment by simply talking to the barkeep. Mock battles also serve as a great resource for coin which you need in order to purchase items from the merchant, as well as an excellent way to level up any units who may be falling behind. For early to mid game farming specifically, I found that the close quarters combat, defending the arena, and forces divided mock battles to be a great source of coin, resources, and experience. Close quarters combat is a great map for coin and leveling units to around 11, defending the arena is an excellent map for resources and leveling units to around level 18, and forces divided is another mock battle that gives a decent amount of resources and can be used as a source of leveling units to around level 21. Of course, any of the mock battles will suffice, but I found those three in particular to not only be lucrative, but also very easy due to how you can manipulate the enemy AI on those maps. 
If you want to make your resource and coin farming even more lucrative, I recommend purchasing the Golden Pinky Ring from your provisioner as soon as you can. This is an excellent accessory that increases the chance for enemies to drop spoils when defeated. You can further increase your coin gains during these mock battles by using the unit named Lionel once you recruit him, as he will also collect a bit of coin whenever you have him pick up spoils, though I personally don't bother with this. Still, the option is there. Finally, I want to provide some tips on combat as well as touch on some interesting interactions you may want to know about. First and foremost, always try to attack an enemy from behind whenever you can, as this will guarantee a critical strike. Likewise, attacking an enemy from a position of higher elevation than your target will also increase the damage that you deal to them. You also want to try and pincer your target when attacking them whenever you can, as this will guarantee your other unit will do a follow-up attack. Do note, however, that archers cannot do follow-up attacks even if they are directly next to an enemy. It can also be a good idea to get in the habit of using healing and buffing abilities even when you don't need to. Now, you don't always want to be doing this, especially in tough battles, but when the battle is coming to a close or when your units are relatively safe, it can be a great way of gaining experience on those supporting units who don't usually do any of the actual fighting. Another powerful tool at your disposal in combat, and one that can be easy to forget about, is the Quietus system. Quietus are powerful effects that you can use once per battle. As you play through Triangle Strategy, more and more of these Quietus effects will become available for you to purchase with kudos from your encampment. And while they are all worth picking up, a few do stand out above the rest as being especially useful. Or at least they're the ones that I got the most use out of. First is In Tandem. This is a Quietus that costs one Quietus point to use and guarantees that a selected ally unit will act next in battle. Next is Fleet Footed. This one costs two Quietus points to use and increases the movement of all allies on their following action by two. Finally, there is Battle Cry, which costs two Quietus points to use and instantly gives three TP to a single ally. Like I said, all Quietus abilities are worth picking up, but these three are the ones I'd recommend grabbing as soon as you can. And to close things out, let's talk about some useful and interesting interactions. If you use an Ice-type attack on an enemy, it will leave a patch of ice on the ground underneath them. You can then use a Fire-type attack on top of this to melt that ice, creating a puddle of water. If you then use a Lightning-type attack on any unit standing in a puddle of water, or on a puddle of water itself, the attack will then chain lightning damage to all units, friend and foe, standing in connected puddles of water. If you use a Fire-type attack on Grass or any other flammable surface, it will set that surface on fire, dealing damage to any unit that passes through it or who stands inside of it. You can then use an Ice-type attack on the Burning Tile to put out the fire. Alternatively, you can use the Shaman Recruit Ezana's Rite of Rain ability to make it rain, putting out all fires and randomly creating puddles all over the map. If you use a Knockback ability on an enemy near a ledge, they will fall off and take fall damage. If you give Eridor the Rear Guard's Cloak accessory, its passive effect of reducing damage from behind will stack with Eridor's Steelback passive, creating a situation in which he actually takes less damage when struck from behind than from any other angle. This can further be used to your advantage to manipulate the enemy AI as they tend to prioritize back attacks. Using Benedict's Twofold Turn ability on Anna, who has the Act Twice passive ability, will allow her to move twice and take four actions in one turn. And finally, having Medina use an AoE healing item on multiple units once she's unlocked her TP Physic ability will result in all units gaining 1 TP. This can be further exploited by making use of her Double Items ability to quickly heal up your party and ensure they have ample TP to continue the offensive. Now I'm sure there are many more interesting and useful interactions that I've either forgotten or haven't discovered yet, but these should be enough to get you going on your path through the game. And that'll do it for my top tips for Triangle Strategy. If you found this video helpful and informative, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions about this video, Triangle Strategy, or any other game that I cover, you can hit me up over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash roslangaming, or my Discord server, both of which are linked in the video description below. Until next time, take care.